the microwave is such a big and good invention in the history. Like when your food is cold and you want it warm, you just throw it in the microwave, you push a few buttons and bam, after a few minutes, your food is warm and hot. But what does the microwave do to make it warm? And the biggest question of all, who invented this machine? and of World War II. Many people have lost their lives, but many inventions were born. During World War II, there was a laboratory and a scientist. The scientist was named Spencer Percy. And Spencer was a specialist in radar technology. In the meantime, the Germans were very busy with dropping bombs out of airplanes on the cities. Oh yeah, that was during the night, because then it's very hard to locate the planes. But one day... ENOUGH! I have to invent something to help the army to locate the German planes during the night. So Spencer went back to his laboratory to invent this little guy here, the Magnetron. Actually, this is a magnetron we use these days because I couldn't find a picture of a magnetron that Spencer invented back then. The function this thing has is only emitting microwaves. As we can see here on the electromagnetic spectrum, we have on the left radio waves, and those have a very low frequency. That means that these waves are totally fine and no danger at all. And on the right, we have gamma rays and X rays, and as we can see, they they have a frequency that is very high, which means that those rays are dangerous. In the middle we have the visible light, which means that those frequencies we can see colors with our human eye. And on the left we have microwaves, and as we can see, the frequency of the microwaves are very low and they are totally safe for us. The plan is very simple. You build a magnetron that can emit microwaves and you build something that can receive those waves. And then the magnetron sender sends microwaves into the sky in any possible directions. And then when a German plane flies by, it reflects those microwaves that hit the plane. As soon as the signal is received in the receiver, Spencer was able to locate the German plane. But the real question is, how fast was Spencer able to locate a plane? Now let's take an example. Now we have a plane flying with a height of 3 kilometers. It means that the microwave has to travel 3 kilometers into the sky and then gets reflected back to Earth. The distance is 6 kilometers in total. And we all know that the speed of waves is equal to the speed of light. It's around 300,000 kilometers per second. It means that Spencer could locate a plane in only 0.02 milliseconds. So that was the history of a magnetron. But let's move back to the present and let's find out how this thing makes us food hot. But before we start, you have to accept one little fact. And that is that microwaves can only affect water molecules. So let's take a closer look to a water molecule. We all know the chemical formula for water is H2O, the most famous chemical formula if you ask me. But what does H2O mean? H2O is a water molecule which exists of two different types of atoms. Two H atoms or hydrogen atom and one O atom or oxygen atom. We see that the hydrogen atom only has one proton in its core and one electron flying around it. It's the only element in the world with no neutrons in its core. That is why there is a 1 to the H on the table of Mendeleev. If you look to the oxygen atom, we see that it has 8 protons and 8 neutrons in its core. Meanwhile, around the core there are 8 electrons flying around it. That is why there is a number 8 next to oxygen. Also, there is another strange number. For hydrogen, it's 1.008. That number represents the atomic weight. For oxygen, it's 15.9. That means that one oxygen atom 
has the weight that is almost 16 times larger than one hydrogen atom. Or in other words, 16 hydrogen atoms has around the same weight as one oxygen atom. Because an oxygen atom is almost 16 times heavier than one hydrogen atom, it has to be 16 times larger as well, it sounds logic. I try to represent one water molecule here with those circles. The blue circles are the hydrogen atoms, while the red one is the oxygen one. All those atoms work as one. It means that they share their electrons. Now let's watch the path of one electron. As you can see, the electron his path around the oxygen atom is much larger than its path around the hydrogen atoms. Because the electron is negatively charged, it means that the oxygen atom gets more negatively charged than the hydrogen atoms. So we can write a minus next to the oxygen atom and a plus to both of the hydrogen atoms. Just keep that in mind. Now let's have a closer look to the microwave themselves. We have two different terms of fields here. E is the electric field and B is the magnetic field. We also clearly see that there is an angle of 90 degrees between them. In the world of electricity, there is always 19 degrees between the magnetic field and the current. It are only the magnetic waves that we use to heat up our food in the microwave, which is sinus wave B. We assume when the sinus wave is above the x-axis, the wave is positively charged, and when it's under the x-axis, it's negatively charged. Now let's check out what happens when a water molecule meets a microwave. So we have our water molecule and our sine wave that we are shooting at our water molecule. While we are in the upper phase of our sine wave, which is the plus polarity, it will attract the negative side of the water molecules, which is the side without the hydrogen atoms. If we continue our sine wave, the polarity flips, but so does the water molecule. It simply follows the polarity of the sine wave. Microwave that we use in our kitchen has a frequency of around 2.45 gigahertz. This means that the water molecule flips 4,900,000 times each second. Because not all water molecules in your food are facing in the same direction, they are starting to rub each other. You can simply check it by yourself. What happens when you rub your hands? Correct, you get heat. And that is exactly what happens with those water molecules. Another effect of magnetrons is that they only can emit a power of 1000 watts or one kilowatt. But Stefan, my microwave oven has the option to choose how many watts it uses. An example, you set your microwave oven to a power of 500 watts. The only thing your magnetron is doing is just turning on and off for 50% of the time. So you get an average of 500 watts.